I bet that only few of you have already heard the name of Didier Sornet. Well, believe me, if you're an investor, the next time you hear about him, you'll find yourself much poorer than you are now. Unless you decide to hear what he has to say. Let me convince you with a couple of examples. On the 27th of October 1997, the New York Stock Exchange faced one of the largest losses in its history, with financial markets losing more than $600 billion in one day alone. In the same day, Sir Nat, who was back then just a professor of geophysics in LA, California, made 400% profit. Or I'm pretty sure you all know about the burst of the housing bubble in the US between 2006 and 2007. Sir Nat had actually already warned months before about the presence of an inflationary bubble in the American real estate market. Or maybe you invest in cryptocurrency. Well, again, back in 2017, the scientific community warned that Bitcoin was showing a clear bubble behavior. Then, a few months later, in January 2018, the cryptocurrency market lost about 65% of its value in less than a month. So everything seems to point to the fact that scientists have finally come up with a way to predict financial crashes. In today's video, we will take a look at this topic and we will try to understand the idea behind one of the most successful methods for the prediction of financial markets behavior. Well, physics and engineering have always been about making predictions, right? And especially in the last few decades, there has been a lot of focus on the possibility of uh, predicting sudden crashes like the explosion of a tank under pressure or the occurrence of an earthquake or just a balloon popping. So it was only a matter of time before someone discovered the link between catastrophic events in engineering and geophysics and financial crashes. Well, among the people who have contributed the most to the development of crash prediction models is definitely Didier Sornet. Sornet is a physicist that supported the idea that at the base of many forms of crashes, whether it be a material under pressure, a tectonic plate, or a financial bubble, is the concept of self-organization, which is typically known in economics and social sciences as herding behavior. In short, herding behavior is when investors stop behaving rationally and they start behaving like a herd, just following trends and doing what other people are doing. If investors start behaving irrationally like a herd, in fact, asset prices rise and fall depending on the choices of few influential people. People start buying stocks and cryptocurrency not because there is a real reason to do so, but just because other people are doing the same, and this leads to a growth in the value of an asset which is absolutely unmotivated. Obviously, when there is such a mechanism in place, it's not only optimism and willing to buy that propagates irrationally, but also bad news and panic. You know those sudden small drops in value that usually anticipate the burst of a bubble? Well, those are exactly what I'm speaking about. Those sudden drops are basically the sign of bad news and panic propagating in some areas of the market. Now, the essential point of this story is that if there is a bubble, these ups and downs in the value of an asset tend to follow a pattern which is actually not random. On the contrary, it is very precise. And here is where physics comes into play. Imagine that you want to describe the failure of a material under stress. At microscopic level, stress rupture can be explained by the presence of many small imperfections that are under stress. When these elements break, they release energy, resulting in small fractures. Under normal conditions, all these tensions point into different directions, so that the result overall is zero. In this case, if one element fails, the stress is not able to propagate far away into the material. It's a little bit as if the presence of many tensions pointing into different directions would cancel each other out. Now, imagine instead that for some reason order starts to appear in how those elements are oriented. For example, because the material is put under pressure or because it's heated up. In this case, it's like the various elements in the material started to cooperate. When one element fails, then the stress propagates and adds to that of elements nearby, which also fail and propagate and amplify the stress. You would observe just a few cracks at first, but then these cracks start occurring more and more frequently until the breaking point of the material is reached. The frequency with which all these small cracks form inside the material follows a very specific pattern, 
which in mathematics is called log periodic, because the time between two small crack events decreases in a way that is related to the logarithm of the time. And the same thing seems to be happening also in financial markets. Speculative bubbles are like a material under stress, and the elements of the material are the various financial agents. If the financial agents begin to behave in an organized way, following a herding behavior, then the entire system becomes very unstable, and small cracks appear in the system always more frequently, triggering eventually the market crash. The dot-com bubble, the collapse of the Russian rubble in 1998, the collapse of Bitcoin that was observed just a couple of weeks ago, are all crashes that were preceded by a number of price oscillations that, at a certain point, started becoming more frequent in time, according to a log periodic model. So, can we say that we have finally discovered the formula to predict financial crashes? Well, obviously there are many other factors that must be taken into account. And since we are talking about physics, it's important to remember a fundamental principle, which is that every time you perform a measure, you alter the system in some way. So even if these predictions were extremely accurate, then the market could still move to diffuse the bubble, or even worse, trigger the burst in advance. But we don't want to get into overly complicated and almost philosophical topics, so we'll stop the discussion here for today. But if you like this video, you will also enjoy more on this channel. Thanks for watching, stay tuned and don't forget to like and subscribe.